Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a worship leader in Redwood City, California, and today I'm going to show you how I record a multi-cam worship video with just one camera. If you're a worship leader watching this in 2021, chances are that in 2020, you've been doing some audio and video production as part of your worship ministry. And if you're at a small to medium church like me, then you've been wearing multiple or many or all of the hats um, of an entire production team. So today I'm gonna share with you a technique that I've picked up while producing content for online worship and online chapel services that allows me to create a multi-cam video with just one single camera. You might find this technique helpful if you only have access to one camera and you want to get more out of your videos, or if you're in a pinch and you need a simpler way to create an interesting video, or if you want to minimize the errors or mistakes that might happen when you're syncing and editing different um, video files from different cameras. In my opinion, this technique works best when you're just recording two people and together side by side, um, but you can adapt this for your needs once you get a hang of how this works. And I've also used this technique to record interviews or announcements where you got two people standing next to each other talking or they're interacting with each other. Now for this technique to work, you're going to need three things. The first is that you'll need a camera that can shoot in 4K resolution, or at least a resolution that's higher than what your videos end up being exported at. The second thing is that you'll need to be able to have your subjects about two to four feet apart. They're not too close where they feel claustrophobic and tight, but they're not too far apart from each other where it feels kind of awkward, like they're not connected. And if you're concerned about social distancing, then you can hang a clear shower curtain or something that can go between your two subjects that will isolate them too. But usually when I use this technique, I'm recording with my fiance, who's awesome and beautiful and sings way better than I can. Shout out. And the last thing you'll need to do is to set your angle wide enough where you can see both people clearly and maybe set it a little wider than where you would probably want your wide shot to be. So after you got all that set up, turn on your camera, do your thing, and once you have your video recorded, we're gonna get to the fun part, using editing magic to turn our one camera shot into a multi-cam video. So here I have my file imported into Final Cut Pro and we're gonna utilize what's called the multi-cam editing feature. Um, if you're using another major editing software such as Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, I think there's multi-cam editing features in there, but you'll have to go look that up. In 2020, all I've been using is Final Cut, so... Yep. So we're gonna right-click our video file here and select new multi-cam clip. Quick note, I recorded my audio directly to camera and then mixed that audio in Logic and then re-exported that audio directly to my video file. So now my audio and video is already synced up. If you have a separate audio file, you'll want to make sure you select that with your video file before you right click and select new multicam clip. So let's select new multicam clip and we're going to name this um, Abide With Me. That's the song we recorded, Multi. And we're going to set our video resolution here down to 1080p, even though this is a 4K video file, because our video is going to be exported in 1080. And then everything else is the same from the camera. We're going to hit OK. And now that Final Cut has created a multicam file for us, we're going to double click it to open it. And we're going to go over here to where the first angle is. We're going to hit this little drop down arrow and add an angle. And we're going to keep doing that until we have as many angles as we need. And in my case, we're doing a total of four angles. We're going to have one wide shot with both Allison and I. We're going to have two tight shots, one for each Allison and me. And then the last one is going to be a tight shot on the guitar. And what I find helpful is naming each angle by just clicking on the name and naming them what they're going to be. I like using all caps because it's easy to see. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our original video file from the finder and drop it into each of the angles down here. And now we're going to start setting how each angle is going to look. Now this technique works because we've shot our video in 4K resolution, but we're only going to export it in 1080p. 4K has four times the amount of pixels as 1080, which allows us to scale up our video or zoom in up to 200% without losing any resolution. So now let's decide how each angle is going to look by scaling up the video on each angle track. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with the wide angle. So we're going to click this little video icon to make sure we're looking at the wide track. Let's select the clip that's inside our wide angle. And let's go to somewhere about the middle where we don't look weird. Ah, that looks good enough to me. 
And let's go over here and set the scale. I like it about there, but there's a little bit too much headspace, so I'm going to move it down a little bit. This looks pretty good to me, so let's move over to Allison's tight shot. We're going to click the video icon right here to make sure we're looking at that one. So now let's click on the Allison clip, and we're going to scale up, and let's see how far in we want to go. Let's go to about 180. And I'm going to click this button right here, which lets me drag the video around to place it where I want it. So I'm going to drag it and place it about there. I like to place my subject a little off center. It gives you um, almost a rule of thirds type of look, but not quite. So let's place her about there, give her a little bit of headspace and hit done. And we'll do the same with the Brandon angle and we'll set it to the same percentage. So let's set it to 180 here. And we're gonna click here so we can drag it around and let's put me right about, let's go with that. And lastly, the guitar angle, let's click on that here and scale it up. Let's scale this one a little closer. Let's go, let's go all the way to 200. 200 member is the maximum we can zoom in before we start losing resolution. And let's move this guy around, oops, like that. And we're gonna put this one lower, but centered because this one is just looking at the guitar. And now we've successfully turned one camera shot into four different angles. If you click on these video angles, you can now see what each of them look like. Now we can get to the fun part, which is cutting our angles together to make a complete music video. So let's create a new project and we're going to name this Abide With Me. And we're gonna make sure it's set to 1080p and hit OK. And take this multicam file, which has the multicam icon next to it and drop it right into the timeline. What you'll want to do next is you want to go over to view up here and click on angles and enable your angles. And what I like to do is I like to move around my window so I can see my angles more clearly. I'm going to close this right here so that can blow up. And right now this is showing me nine angles and I only have four. So let's change that up here in the settings to display four angles. And before we start cutting angles together, I like to make sure that I have this video icon selected. What this tells Final Cut to do is every time you cut an angle, it's only changing the video and not the audio. And this is especially important if you have a separate audio track. I have mine attached to my videos, but if you have a separate one, you'll want to make sure that Final Cut doesn't change the audio to the camera's audio. You want to make sure it stays on your mixed audio. If you have mixed audio on a separate track, you wanna make sure your multicam clip is set to that by right-clicking your clip and going up to active audio angle and selecting one of your audio angles if you have it. What I really love about Final Cut's multicam editing feature is that it's as simple as just clicking the angle that you want and at that point in the timeline, your clip will change to that angle. So if I click to Allison, it will change to Allison. If I click to guitar, it will change to guitar. And notice here that this clip stays green because the audio is staying on the wide angle. If you have music, it would stay on your music angle. And if I click to this point in the timeline and I wanted to change the angle over to Allison, all I have to do is click it and the clip changes and splits to that angle. How I like to do this is I like to play through the video from beginning to end and cut my angles as if I were switching cameras live. And I'll try to go as far as I can, but I'll pause at certain areas that need a little bit more attention. So let's do that now. So once we have all our cuts in place, the timing is right, the angle choices are or where we want them. We're going to go back to our browser here and we're going to open up our multicam file once more. And now all that's left is to add some lyrics and some color correction. What I love about this technique is that all the angles come from the same file, the same camera. So all I'm going to do is color correct the main wide angle and copy the correction over to the other files. So I like it about there. I'm not the best color editor, but for now, let's keep that there. What we're going to do is we're going to select this clip. We're going to hit command C to copy. We're going to select our other clip. Let's put our camera on there. Make sure we can see this angle and we're going to hit command shift V. It's going to ask us what we want to copy over. We're not going to copy over any of the transform, but just the color effects paste. It looks good. So let's do that to the rest of the angles. So now we got color correction. Let's go back to our main project, slap some lyrics on, and this video is finished. So it's totally up to you how you like to cut angles. Maybe you want to try it a couple times to see what you like doing, what your taste is. I'll change up how frequently I cut angles or when I cut to which angle 
depending on a song or even in different moments of the song, depending on what that moment calls for. But I think something really helpful to keep in mind is that whether you carry the title worship leader or tech director or producer or video editor, your creative choices when making these videos for church and for worship, every single one of those creative decisions makes an impact on how your church leads people in worship, especially in this difficult time. So know that your work is leading people in worship when they're at home. One thing that God has been teaching me through this time of leading worship in the pandemic is that since we can't see people in front of us in the time of worship, we can't see what effect our work has on their hearts, is to really put our trust in Him and His Spirit and in His Word to be effective and transformative through our work in production th during the week. God says in Isaiah 55, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. And if he said it, we believe it. So I hope you found this one camera technique helpful. It certainly has helped me in my ministry. Go out and try it and see how it works for you. Keep up the good work and go with God.